Hello and welcome to slideshow one of the grade 9 science curriculum for Alberta, Electrical Principles and Technologies. Here's a concept map of what we will be covering in science 9 electric electricity unit. Things like static electricity and current electricity, electrical safety, what makes up an electrical circuit, um, the units, volts, amperes, and ohms, the difference between cells and circuits, the um, what are resistors, how energy is transformed, and some energy sources. Static electricity, when you get shocked or see a spark, you are experiencing the same electrical effect that makes lightning. Most objects have the same number of positive or protons and negative or electrons charges. They, that makes them neutral or having no charge. Static electricity happens when there is an imbalance in electrons, which have electrical charges. When there is a difference in the electrical charge, certain actions are predictable. So if you have a positive charge and a negative charge together, they attract. If you try to put two positive charges together or two negative charges together, they repel. This is called the laws of electrical charges. Charge separation occurs when a charged object is brought close to a neutral object. The charged electrons repel the electrons in the neutral object and the charged object is attracted to the protons of the neutral object. For instance, the wall is neutral and the balloon is negative, so the electron, the negative electrons are pushing away the electrons of the substances that make up the wall and they're attracted to the protons. Here, you have the negative particles repelling, so that is opposites repel, or like repel. For example, a balloon sticks to a wall after it is rubbed over your hair. Electrical discharge is the movement of charges whenever an imbalance of charges occurs. The, re the action results in neutralizing the objects. The overcharged electrons repel the electrons in the object and the positive protons attract the charged electrons causing a discharge or miniature lightning bolt. So here is an example of electrical discharge. Van de Graaff generators. These generators build up excess static charge using friction. A rubber belt rubs a piece of metal and transfers the charge to a sphere. When you touch the sphere, the charge builds up on you. Certain animals, like the electric eel, produce an electric shock. To kill or stun prey, they have a special organ that contains specialized muscle cells called electroplaques. Each cell produces a small amount of electricity. When all the cells work together, a large amount of electricity is produced and used to help the eel survive. This type of electricity is like static electricity, which builds up and then discharges. It does not flow continuously. Electrical devices need a steady flow of electricity. The steady flow of charged particles is called electrical current. A flow continues until the energy source is used up or disconnected. Amperes. The rate at which an electrical current flows is measured in amperes. This flow varies from a fraction of an ampere to many thousands of amperes, depending on the device. Conductors are used to allow the flow of electrical charges from where they are produced to where they are needed. These conductors are materials, often wires, which allow the flow of electrical charges easily. Circuits. A circuit is a pathway which allows the flow of electricity. Most electrical surface circuits use wires as conductors, although many others use gases, and some use fluids or other materials. A circuit consists of a conductor, an energy source, a load, and often a switch to control the flow of electricity. Electrical energy is the energy carried by charged particles. A voltage is a measure of how much electrical energy each charged particle carries. The higher the energy of each charged particle, the greater the potential energy. Also called potential difference, the energy delivered by a flow of charged particles is equal to the voltage times the number of particles. Voltage units are volts or V, 
and for safety purposes, the volts of most everyday devices we commonly use is relatively low, while industries and transmission lines are relatively high. Measuring voltage. The simplest way to measure voltage is with a voltmeter. Uh, the red is the positive, the black is the negative. Some voltmeters can measure a wide range of voltages. So here you have red positive, black negative. The other one is called a multimeter. <laughs> These multimeters should be used with caution so that the sensitive needle is not damaged by testing a low range with high voltage. Measuring voltage with computers, a voltmeter can also be hooked up to a computer. Hook up the red and black leads in the same way as you would for a voltmeter. So red is positive and black is negative.